get started with a word of prayer, and then we'll move right on into the sermon. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I bow myself down here before you. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would make me a rusty nail upon the wall and hang a portrait of Jesus on that nail so that he may be seen and not me. I pray, Lord, as I yield myself to you, put your words in my mouth that as I speak here today, you would receive all the glory. So I pray, Lord, that you will speak to me, speak through me as I speak to your people, and that you may receive all the praise, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> My title is Blessings of Yesterday. Are not the blessings of today. And the scripture reading again is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11 through 12. And it says, not all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for what? Our ammunition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Turn with me, if you please, in your Bibles to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 22, 2 Kings chapter 22, and we will consider verses 1 and 2. Do you know that 2 Kings are just in the stories of the Old Testament period? There are beautiful lessons and practical understanding that we can get from these Bible stories found in the Old Testament. For us to review and gain the lessons from it, because as we read in our scripture reading, they are what? For our admonition. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 22, let us consider verses 1 and 2. Says Josiah was what? Eight years old when he began to reign. How many eight year olds we have in here today? I see one hand raised. So I want you to take note that as God spoke to Josiah at eight years old and raised him up to be a king, he could do the same for you. There's a lesson in the story for young people as well as for adults. Didn't God say in his word that he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh? Go quickly to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Reading from Acts chapter 2 and let us look at Verses 17 through 18. Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, and it says, And it shall come to pass, in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. The same will be found in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 and 29. And verse 18 says, 
And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So let's pick back up where we left off in verses 1 and 2 of 2 Kings chapter 22. Going back to 2 Kings chapter 22, and it says, And he, Josiah, reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jadadai, the daughter of Adai of Boscat. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. This is a beautiful commentary. How many of us here today would want God to repeat those words of us? That we walk right in the sight of God. Surely, God can say that about us if we walk in, in obedience to his commandments. You see, brother and Josiah never got off track in following the Lord. God had a special message for Josiah. So let's see if Josiah listened to all the words of the Lord. Now let us drop down and look at verses 13 through 20. The same book, chapter 22, 2 Kings chapter 22, and let's consider verses 13 through 20. And if you have it, you could read with me, because some of these names are not easy to pronounce, but we're going to get through it together. Go ye, verse 13, inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judea, concerning the words of this book that is found, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened to the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. You know, we were speaking in Sabbath school about why Jesus haven't returned. And it's not that he can't come, but he's waiting to find a faithful people that's going to hearken and do all the things that he has instructed us to do. Verse 14, so Hilkiah the priest and Hahakam and Akbar and Shaphan and Hazeha went unto Hudai the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvah, the son of Haris, keeper of the wardrobe. Thank God we got through that. <laughs> now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. Verse 15. And she said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah had read. Because what? They have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. Verse 18, But the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself 
before the Lord when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof that they should become a desolation and a curse and has rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, said the Lord. Verse 20. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I bring up on this place. And they brought the king word again. Now, God gave a promise to Josiah. Because of his faithfulness toward God, not moving to the right or to the left, but walking straight and narrow with God. God said he was going to promise that he was going to allow Josiah to go into his grave in peace. Not like all the other kings before him. But I ponder on the question when it says, Thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace. And he, Josiah, would not see the destruction that God would bring upon Judah because of all the evil acts they committed. Now remember God's promise that he would allow Josiah to go into his grave in peace. Even though all these calamities, wars, and constant violence acts was all around them, God would not let him see anything like all the other kings saw. So let's fast forward. Let's see what really happened. Let's go over to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 35. Remember, when God promises something, he keeps his promise. But he only keeps his promise upon conditions that what? We obey. 2 Chronicles chapter 35. And we're going to pick up with the story in verse 16 and read down to verse 24. 2 Chronicles chapter 35. Starting at verse 16, it says, So all the service of the Lord was prepared the same day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of the Lord, according to the commandment of King Josiah. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, seven days. And there was no Passover like to that kept in all of Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Neither did all the kings of Israel Keep such a Passover as Josiah kept. And the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present in the inhabitants of Jerusalem. God felt real good about Josiah. Bragging about his servant. God said, this man is honoring me so much that there hasn't been a Passover kept like this degree of reverence since the time of Samuel the prophet. Does God brag on us? Are we walking in the spirit of Christ's righteousness so that he could brag on us? If he's not, then we need to consider our ways and see which way we are walking. Verse 19, it says, In the 18th year of the reign of Josiah was the Passover kept. Now here we go. Let's see if Josiah 
actually honored the words of the Lord so that the Lord could continually say that he would go in his grave in peace. Pick up at verse 20. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Nico, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Koshmus by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thy king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste, forbear thee from meddling with God who is with me, that he destroy thee not. You know, we serve a very good and long-suffering God. He's always willing to give us a warning before he allow the execution of judgment. Listen to this in verse 22. Nevertheless, Josiah would what? Not turn his face from him, but disguise himself that he might fight with him and hearken not unto the words of Nico from the mouth of God and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot at King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Have me away, for I am sore wounded. Hmm. Interesting. Now, God had made him a promise early, early on in 2 Kings. But now he's saying, I am, what? Sore wounded. Now, I was trying to understand and see how Brother Josiah was sorely wounded and was to die at peace. Sound like an oxymoron right there. It just didn't add up. My question to you, can you be sorely wounded in a peaceful way? It can't happen. Because this way, this was the promise that was given by God. Verse 24, it says, His servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers. And all of Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Why did this happen? Why didn't Josiah listen to the voice of God? Even God didn't directly speak to him, but he sent who? Nico. Nico. A nun seven day at Venice. A nun seven day at Venice to rebuke and to come to a seven day at Venice who was walking in all the ways of the Lord. But at this very moment, he did not listen. That's a lesson in it for us. God had many ways in which he could reach his people. Amen? You see, but Brother Josiah, he was continually living off of yesterday's blessing of how God blessed him and not the blessings that he should have been living for that day, that moment.
God can bless us yesterday with one blessing and want to bless us today with another blessing. But we have too much of a religion based on what we did in the past. I used to witness and pass our literature for Christ. I used to do devotion every day, giving yesteryear's testimony, living off the remnants of yesterday's blessing. When the Lord says in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. We don't have to take thought for tomorrow when today is still here. God is faithful. His blessings, his mercies, they are new every morning because his faithfulness is so great. <laughs> the Bible makes it clear that we are to have an experience with God daily. God shouted out these blessings to Josiah and honoring him and told him what he was going to do to the nation. But God was going to allow him to go to his grave in peace. But we see here that didn't happen. So was God or his word flawed? No, it wasn't. Because God keeps his promises toward us. You see, brethren, throughout God's word are promises to us, but we must keep our end of the bargain. We see here that Josiah didn't listen to Nacho, a man coming from a heathen nation where people are not connected with God to deliver a message to him. Now, God wants to, to, to deliver a message to me and also to you. And he might use a person of another nation. He might use a person of another faith. And when he used these people that are not so closely connected with him to deliver a message, he's trying to reach our attention. But because we are Seventh-day Adventists and we've been in the church for a long time, some of us, we say we have no need to listen to a person who is not a Seventh-day Adventist. I've been in this faith, and I know all the doctrines of the faith. So why am I listening to you, who is a Sunday keeper, trying to tell me about Jesus? I know everything I need to know. But instead of keeping ourselves humble, and allow God to use an individual to come to us, that he's trying to show us that our characters might be flawed just because we have the truth and we know all the doctrines of the faith. Doesn't mean that we're walking in the way of the Lord. See, having much knowledge and all understanding but not, not allowing it to be practical in our everyday life doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> so we see here, when we ought to be listening carefully and going into prayer to see what is said is true, we choose to follow our own will. Listen to this statement taken from manuscript release 
page 163, 1903. It says, those who would not take God's word as assurance need not hope that human wisdom can help them. For human wisdom, aside from God, is like the waves of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. The word of Christ is, he shall guide you into all truth. Reject not the light given. Do you know? Do you know when the Holy Spirit come to us and convict us of something that God really want us to know. And we turn deaf ear from wanting to hear. Do you know it's blasphemy? Did you know that? Listen to this. This is taken from 5 BC 1093. It said the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit does not lie in any sudden word or deed. It is the firm, determined resistance of truth and evidence. When God tried to speak to us and show us something that we should be doing in these last days before he come, and we continue to push away from it, that's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So we better take heed when that still small voice come to us and speak to us. Might want us to change our, our dress. Might want us to push away from things that we are eating in our diet. We better take heed. Recognize and listen carefully to the voice of God. Let's pick back up reading from Manuscript Release 163, 1903. It said, Josiah had done a good work. During his reign, idolatry was put down and apparently successfully uprooted. The temple was reopened and the sacrificial offering reestablished. His work was done well. God had bragging rights on this brother, but at the last he died in battle. Why? Because he did not heed the warnings given. Luke says, Luke 14 and verse 31. We're going to pick back up with the story in manuscript. Luke 14, verse 31 and 32. Christ was speaking here. And he says, Consider a what king going to make war against another king? Sit it not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desire condi conditions of peace. Even Saul in the book of Samuel before he went to battle he consulted with the Lord first. Jesus himself did not make a move without consulting with his father. It goes on to say in manuscript, because Josiah died in battle, who will charge God with denying his word that Josiah should go to his grave in peace. The Lord did not give orders for Josiah to make war on the king of Egypt. 
when the Lord gave the king of Egypt orders that the time had come to serve him by warfare, and the ambassadors told Josiah not to make war on Nico, no doubt Josiah congratulated himself that no word from the Lord had come directly to him. I wonder why is that? Because he was living off of yesterday's blessings. All that, that God blessed him with in the past, he didn't listen to the very thing that God wanted him to hear at that moment. And it cost him his life. Now, does that mean Josiah won't get into the kingdom of heaven? No, I truly don't believe that. I think he will be in heaven. But it kept him from dying in peace. That's what God wanted for him, for his life. Just like Moses, he wanted for Moses to go into the promised land. But because Moses what? Struck the rock and not speak to the rock. It kept him out of what? Canaan. So Josiah, like I was saying, congratulated himself that no word from the Lord had come directly to him. To turn back with his army would have been humiliating. So he went on forward. And because of this, he was killed in battle, a battle that he should not have had anything to do with. The man who had been so greatly honored by the Lord did not honor the word of God. The Lord has spoken in his favor, predicted good things for him, and Josiah became self-confident and failed to heed the warning. He went against the word of God, choosing to follow his own way, and God could not shield him from the consequences of his act. Do you know God always gives a warning, as I said earlier, before he allow his judgment to be executed? It goes on to say, in this our day, men choose to follow their own desires and their own will. Can we be surprised that there is so much spiritual blindness? You know, the reason that these things happen, because we are still living off of yesterday's blessings and not the blessings of today that God wants to give us. <clears throat> God can speak many different ways and through many different things. Didn't God use a donkey to speak to Balaam? And didn't God himself speak through a bush to Moses? How about this one? Zarephath, a woman outside of the faith, Speaking to Elijah, a man of God, God could use whomever he so pleased. Speak through anything to get our attention and bring us back down to earth. Oh, how we need to humble ourselves before the Lord. But two of the primary ways in these last days that God speak to his people in the Seventh-day Adventist church is through his word and through the spirit of prophecy. But I tell you today, there are many in the Seventh-day Adventist church 
that despise the teaching of the spirit of prophecy. Even though 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 tell us that we are to believe in the Lord our God, so shall what? We be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall what? We prosper. But because of the arrogance of our Laodicean spirit, we turn a deaf ear. Brothers and sisters, God wants to reach us in these last days. He's about to come. And there are some things in our life that we know we are struggling with. We know we have issues with. And he wants to work those things out of us before he comes. But we're not allowing him to do it. Because of our selfish hearts, we want to hold on. We want the road to be easy. But he says over in Matthew 7, straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. That leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. So we don't have to expect it's going to be a lot of people to enter in through that straight gate. The scripture doesn't tell us that. But it goes on to say what? Wide is the gate and broad is the way. What? That leadeth unto destruction. And many there be will go in there at. I don't want to be one of the ones walking in the broad way. So whatever the Holy Spirit come to me and whisper in my ear to tell me I'm not waking, walking in the ways of the Lord, I want to listen attentively. Because the Bible tells us we should not lean unto our own understanding. In all our ways, what? We have to acknowledge him. So I'm going to end right here, and I pray that what was being said here today have touched and reached all of our hearts. Because as I was preparing this sermon the Lord was speaking to my heart. And I was hoping that when I come here today and brought this message to you guys, that he would speak to your heart as well. Because we all are striving for one thing, and that's to get to heaven. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for your words that have been spoken here today. We just pray, Lord, that we would not be the recipients of yesterday's blessings, but want to receive the blessings that you have for us today. Help us to not be as Josiah was and not listening to you what you were bringing for him at the moment of his death, before his death. But help us to be like Josiah was when he walked with you in the beginning as you instructed him to at eight years old. Lord, we know the road is not easy. But we know through the promises that you have given us through your word that we could do all things through Christ who strengthened us. That road would be easy because we have given it to you. 
So, Lord, bless each one of us here. And help us to be found faithful when you return as you promise. And that we may be resurrected with you. And go back and spend eternity with you. And throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, we will be learning of the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.